वेलकम टू द ग्रेट इंडियन क्रिएटर शो एंड आई एम योर होस्ट देवी इन दिस एपिसोड वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट शौर्य श्रीवास्तव आल्सो नोन एज ट्रेडिंग विद शौर्य ऑन इंस्टाग्राम शौर्य इज अ सेल्फ टॉट ट्रेडर एंड इन्वेस्टर हु हैज गिवन इंप्रेसिव फॉलोइंग ऑन सोशल मीडिया फॉर हिज इनसाइट्स ऑन द स्टॉक मार्केट एंड हिज एंगेजिंग कंटेंट विल बी डाइविंग डीप इनटू हिज जर्नी हिज फिलॉसफी ऑन इन्वेस्टिंग एंड हिज टिप्स फॉर क्रिएटिंग कंपेलिंग कंटेंट that resonates with his audience so sit back relax and join us for this insightful conversation with trading with shorya without any delay join me in welcoming shorya to our show welcome shorya thank you thank you baby it was a very very like uh, ultra positive introduction thank you <laughs> thank you yeah. how are you doing by the way <clears throat> i'm good very relaxed uh, Hmm. Very chill over the last few months. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So to begin with, let's start off. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your background and how you became interested in trading and investing in all fields? Yeah. So um, hmm. I basically uh, was a mechanical engineering student. Right. Uh, graduating in two thousand fourteen. Right. From a college called TSIT. Hmm. And uh, <clears throat> and I think. Um, I think at this point I was I was always a sort of like a curious person, mm-hmm. like a damn curious person. Uh, so I was always curious about, um, uh, I guess in my college days also to mm-hmm. just try trading. So I tried with like small amounts and failed miserably. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was kind of a mild, small fantasy that you know, like hey, you use some mathematical insight and you're able to generate money, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but uh, I obviously gave up on that dream, right? Mm-hmm. I I felt that hey. This this is not possible. It's very hard. It's a very hard field, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I took my first job, I basically uh, it, it's I joined as a data analyst. Okay. So I guess with about one year of work as a data mm-hmm. analyst, um, I started revisiting these mm-hmm. these uh, you know uh, studies around trading and analysis largely, okay. keeping in mind that um, I, I sort of used to feel a little trapped with the whole mm-hmm. like nine to five or mm-hmm. like ten to eight pm right. schedule of. Uh, startups and mm-hmm. companies in bangalore in india in general mm-hmm. so i always felt like i cannot do this full time i think mm-hmm. one year into this i always felt at some point i have to exit this right, right? Mm-hmm. i didn't come from a background where i had a ton of money mm-hmm. right i always had very little money and i had to make my own right. uh, money from mm-hmm. scratch um, but yes so it, it started there where i started really mm-hmm. one or two years into my career i started reading a lot about how to save money right. how to uh, mm-hmm. make sure that you how can i retire in 10 years 5 years 8 okay, years okay. right mm-hmm. uh, i was a complete misfit <laughs> in i was very good at my job right but i felt very trapped okay i didn't get the growth that i wanted mm-hmm. because you have to be a certain way yes. uh, in terms of showing that you know i'm doing a good job in my mm-hmm. corporate life right so it was a lot of like anti corporate thoughts okay which led me to like hey, i have to try to look back and crack it okay yeah and uh, It took quite some time. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm just in a nutshell. I'm just uh, like okay. summarizing it for you. But yeah, like I think uh, three years ago, I said enough is enough. I had worked mm-hmm. about six years mm-hmm. now, okay. and I've gotten decent growth in my career. And I said that hey, you know what? If I've been solving like insanely data data heavy problems mm-hmm. for big companies, right? Um, I'd solved some really cool problems for companies like Ola. And okay. I've worked for a bunch of startups. Mm-hmm. Right? So, and I was like, if I can do that. Right. Let me just pull down my own problem statement right. that I started on. So, 2020s when I seriously with a good amount of capital got back into okay. trading full on. Like I would mm-hmm. say, started trading full on. Okay. And it's been two and a half, three, two and a half years, okay. three years of uh, trading. And uh, I figured out something in options trading which has worked for me okay. to a good extent. But I'm still figuring out some aspects. But yes, to a large extent, this was the overall narrative. Right. right. Totally get it. And I'm yeah. standing in love for trading right now. <laughs> right. So, like, I want to understand, like, how and why did you discover this niche of content creation? Like, as you already mentioned, but yeah. like, why this one specific? There's so many other categories <laughs> that have gone into. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think uh, I uh, I always um, I want I wanted to make short films. Okay. Okay. Like, as a, as a mm-hmm. small side hobby yeah. type of thing in college. Mm-hmm. Right. So I made a handful of stop motion videos okay. in college, uh, and. I think when I was uh, three years back, when I was also starting this whole thing, where I left my job, pandemic mm-hmm. came, and I said that hey, let's purely focus on trading. Okay. I also said hey, let's also open a YouTube channel. Let's okay. try to fulfill that tiny dream. Okay. Anyway, the world is like kind of coming to an end. Oh. 
it is pandemic right? right and i said hey let's do what we want to do right <laughs> and uh, uh, i started a youtube channel i started mm-hmm. making some videos and uh, few of them took off mm-hmm. uh, but my whole thought process was that hey i can't make short films because uh, i need to hire actors mm-hmm. i need to have a script mm-hmm. i need to uh, plan a lot of things it was right. all pretty expensive so yeah. i said that hey how can we have fun mm-hmm. with fulfilling that little dream of mine that, okay. that kids dream mm-hmm. in my head uh, i said okay let's start making videos just with me as the actor okay and uh, then i made videos and um, mm-hmm. yeah thankfully it's, it's taken off from there so it is just a combination of uh, my interests right. which was one and trying trading i come from a data analytics background okay and i like filmmaking so it was just a combination, combination of these three things of these things yeah, yeah. totally yeah. that's amazing like you at least got to fulfill your, your passion some a kid's dream to passion of it yeah, yeah. just combine and it's the outcome is beautiful right yeah, yeah. so moving on <laughs> like you have shared a lot of engaging content and yeah. people relate like they 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 get interested like yeah. they want yeah. to know what's trading and all of it yeah. like what's your take on creating engaging content yeah i think uh, content creation in general first of all is like a very very hard journey when right. you're starting off yeah. it's damn hard obviously mm-hmm. uh, but i think what has worked for me and mm-hmm. what i understand about engagement i think it's about uh, really understanding you know like little things like uh you know if you have a music beat in the background and if you're mm-hmm. editing the scene to mm-hmm. that beat right mm-hmm. that automatically creates an insane amount of satisfaction in your mind okay. right mm-hmm. yeah. it, it's a very uh, uh subconscious thing that happens yeah. in the back of your head yeah. and there are say like these ten other things right which really just trigger dopamine mm-hmm. or yes. a deep satisfaction in your mind right and your instagram is effectively kind of just measuring that mm-hmm. right so the more people that feel that satisfaction are more people are going to click like right? right so if you can provide valuable information right so if you go online right there's such massive like uh i would say insane knowledge and uh, things available online right but the person who's just saying it mm-hmm. is now doing it in such a dull manner because probably they have not studied how to edit okay. or they they've probably not seen how to Uh, they've put it across in a very professorish manner right, right? Mm. and uh, i said that hey can we do the same thing okay but you got to come off as an instagram personality or as right. a as a more fun entertaining mm-hmm. uh, person mm-hmm. so i put music in almost every video of mine okay right because i feel like that really is far and it drives it <laughs> So uh, <laughs> so yeah I think uh, that's my take on, on how to make it engaging yeah that that's totally and I agree with that I think music is something that subconsciously you get sort of addicted to you can't get over it the beats and all of it it's just ingrained in you yeah so yeah so moving on like how do you stay up to date with uh, the latest trends in the financial world because you are into trading and all of it and money is not an easy job it's like yeah. it has its own difficulties and has everything right So how how do you keep up with that trends and all of it? Yeah, I think uh, sorry. So information is very mm-hmm. important. You need to be like quite updated yes. on a day to day basis. So for me, it's about uh, I I I follow a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Say on YouTube, mm-hmm. right? I subscribe to a lot of people where I get some key information. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Apart from that, I think over time I've just developed. Uh, I use certain tools. So okay. specifically, like I'm an options trader. Okay. Right. So options is uh, something that we call as a derivative in the market, okay. right? Okay. Okay. So uh, just to like get that example out of the way, it's basically you are not actually trading in the stock market. Okay. You are trading in something that is a derived value of that stock market. Oh. Okay. Right. So I'm not betting on Infosys the company to go up. Okay. I'm just making a weekly bet, saying that Infosys will go up by half a percent this week. Okay. So I'm betting on this probability of this outcome. Right. Right. Uh, I'm not actually buying any component of Infosys. Okay. Right. So this is a, a, a derivative world Ooh. called options trading, which right. is what I do. Okay. Uh, and uh, wait, I'm forgetting the question. What is the question? It's about how do you keep up with the latest trends in the financial world? Yes, yes. So I need to actually get some information mm-hmm. every night, right? Every night, based on what's happening in the international markets. So what's the source? Like, is it newspapers or is it any sort of web page or what is it? So I think uh, to be specific, one great source is let's say CNBC. So one sort of news oh, app that I right. follow, right? It's just something that gives me um, the overall flavor of what's happening in the world. Okay. Right. That's one thing. For more specific information with respect to the Indian markets, mm-hmm. 
uh, say a company is releasing some uh, quarterly statement of okay. their profits mm-hmm. right so these sort of things you have a lot of tools in the market okay. right for example i use a tool called sensible right so sensible is um, you have a free and paid version but okay. yeah so basically this tool basically gives me everything to do with the options trading world it's a one stop place for information and other analysis that i want to do mm-hmm. so all of this comes from this tool but otherwise a little bit of mm-hmm. say apps like cnbc but okay. that's about it all right so i want to understand like what is your philosophy on long term investing hmm. so what yeah. what is it sure. okay so this is how i see it okay. right and um, so typically most people mm-hmm. right they are investing in mutual funds right i think uh, people in their 20s are typically right. investing in things like mutual funds right. right where they have limited knowledge of the financial market mm-hmm. this gives you approximately 12% a year Right? Okay. If I take that down to a monthly basis, you will get say one percent a year, one percent right. a month. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So one percent a month is what you are going to get through a relatively safe instrument. Okay. Right. So this is um, this is how most people would look at it. Right? Yes. And I'm personally myself. Uh, I sort of like aim uh, much higher mm-hmm. than that. Okay. So right. So basically, I'm coming up with say solutions to do four x than that. Right. Okay. So I'm trying for four percent a month, or in other words, somewhere around forty-five, fifty percent a year. Okay. So how do you do it? Like, is it through mutual funds or no. how so, do you so, do so, it? Yes. Yeah, so, so the thing is, I'm uh, basically an option seller, right? Right. You or, mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, these sort of higher returns, and you take higher risks as well. Yes. Right. So these sort of returns can only come via um, you know instruments such as options. Right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I guess to to broadly preface what you are trying to come to, I am basically trying to get that forty five to fifty percent a year. Okay. Purely through options trading. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to like get into the depth of it? Yeah, you could. <laughs> okay. Just an overview of like how sure. what is the risk associated, like how much right. of it and all of it. Right. Sure. So the thing is. in uh, um so if you if you the world of options works uh, it's broken down into a weekly manner okay? okay so every week you have contracts that are traded okay. okay people buy and sell contracts okay of anything so it could be infosys as a stock okay or it could be um, nifty or bank nifty which okay. are indexes in india right yeah so you are aware of nifty yes, bank yes yes i am aware of it yeah. so um so the thing is you are just trading these right okay now you have two philosophies okay right either i can buy something Okay. And hope that it skyrockets in value or increases by five percent, ten percent, or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. The second approach is that hey, you know what? I'm actually going to sell this. Okay. Okay. So if I sell something, I'm actually hoping it depreciates in value, mm-hmm. right? So I will buy it back later at a lower price. So if I sold something for hundred and bought it back for fifty, I've made that fifty point profit. So this is the reverse approach to buying. Okay. It's shorting or selling is what it's called in the market. Okay. Right. So I'm actually just trying to. Sell or short um, two different ends of the market. Okay. okay. So if let's say uh, let's say Bank Nifty is at forty thousand as okay. a number, okay. right? So I'm going to make a bet, saying that hey, you know what? I think the market won't go above forty one thousand, and I think it will not go below thirty nine thousand. Okay. Uh, thirty nine thousand. So I've created a two thousand point okay. range, Ooh, okay. right? And um, the closer you are. The max more profit you would okay. make, the wider you are, the lesser less profit, profit you make. make. Right? Simple probability comes. Yes. Out. So, options traders actually is a lot of sellers. This is called selling. Right. Mm-hmm. So you are not buying something and hoping it goes up. Mm-hmm. You are selling two ends of it. Okay. okay. So you have two scales. Okay. Which is called calls and puts. Okay. okay. These are the two ends. Uh, so you sell one call and you sell one put. One call option, one put option. Right. And this creates a range. Mm-hmm. uh where you can make profit okay. now there is like deep analysis into how close you can be how far can you be what do you do when it starts moving to one edge when okay. you start seeing losses right okay yeah because beyond the edge there is big loss right when it's moving you can still figure out things like this might be the range of my loss yes and the right. beauty that i mm-hmm. personally love about mm-hmm. options trading is that in stock now mm-hmm. it's a pure gamble Mm-hmm. It's if you really just for a second mm-hmm. come down to first principles, it's a pure gamble, right? I'm buying something. Mm-hmm. I have no clue whether this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm hoping it goes up. Mm-hmm. I can do some analysis to say that hey, hopefully this month it goes up. 
Okay. Right? Probably it's seventy percent chances going up, but it may never happen. Right. Right. The beauty of options is that when you sell to specific contracts, right, and say these are for a week, on the final day, say it expires on the tenth of May, right, and I have bought it on the first of May. Mm-hmm. In these ten days. Exactly the shape that you see of that graph between these two levels, it will show you like a slab or mm-hmm. whatever formation that you have come up with, right? Mm-hmm. It will exactly hit that value, right? I wish I had a pictorial way to show this to you. Okay. But effectively, you are creating like a slab of profit, and mm-hmm. beyond this slab, there is a slab of loss, fixed loss, fixed okay. profit, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So you are now actually trying to find the most optimized way to create this. Okay. And. No matter what, as long as you keep holding that trade on the final day, that will be the value. Either it will be in range and you will book that profit, it will be out of the range, or you will book some loss. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's it's definitely an outcome. Whether it's mm-hmm. positive or negative is not in your control. Maybe you yeah. can do things to mm-hmm. lower the negatives and higher the positives. Right. But uh, this is what I really love about options is that it's definitely an outcome. Right. In stocks, you're like it could be flagged <laughs> for like next six months. You never right. know, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, so that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, pretty complex. It sounds pretty complex, but yeah. fine, <laughs> right? Yeah. So moving on. So we know being a content creator is tough. Yeah. Like, what has been your biggest challenge that you have faced like so far? Like, this is something that has been the biggest hurdle so far for you. In in content. Yeah, in content. Like in terms of creating content. I think. Okay, I'm just thinking. Um, I think, I think even to this date, and this is still a hurdle. It's right. really hard. I think getting traction on YouTube <laughs> is the hardest thing ever. Okay. Right. I think getting traction on YouTube is very very hard. I think Instagram um, is definitely having some levers, right, where okay. you can be like, hey, you know what. Uh, make it engaging, make it appealing. Uh, in right. the first three seconds, I need things to happen. You know what? Yeah, I need. There's so many rules and tools and all of it. I'm saying yes. you can, you can still really put a massive amount of effort and get good okay. return on Instagram. Okay. Right. But YouTube is like unpredictable. YouTube, I think you have to be consistent. Okay. For three to six months with that kind of top level effort. Right? Okay. And uh, to 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 capture that audience on YouTube. Yeah. I think YouTube for me is like like it has taken it, it's very hard to <laughs> to be able to crack it on YouTube. So mm-hmm. long form on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think is is I yeah. still keep working on it but yeah, it's like that's the most challenging mm-hmm. thing. That's like your challenge yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Moving on. So how how is your experience been with Instagram algorithm? Because everybody has a take on it. Like what is your take on it? Yeah, I think I think um, Instagram algorithm is very much driven to how much you can uh, mentally stimulate people, right. right? I think that's how I I would look at it. Okay. And um, um, so if you're able to say, like, these are some of the rules and hacks in my head, right? Okay. So if in the first five seconds you have to maximize engagement in the first three to five seconds, right? And there, um, so I do a couple of things where. In the very first second, I don't show up on camera, so I yes. slide into the frame. Yes, like I, I wear socks <laughs> and I like slide into the frame. Mm-hmm. So uh, that creates a sort of like a shock effect in your mind. Mm-hmm. It's very, uh, it's very subtle, but mm-hmm. it, it makes a big difference. Right. Or so you have to, I guess, try to do <laughs> a lot to like uh, bombard information in a very unpredictable manner. Okay. I think in the first five seconds. Uh, where you can capture that, I think if you're able to capture people's attention in those first five seconds, uh, then you can retain them to the end of the video. You can retain them to some point, yeah. Right. And um, uh, but but yeah, I think there's so many uh, mm-hmm. tricks and hacks. But yeah, like Instagram algorithm specifically speaking, um, I don't know. I think when I initially got the jump on Instagram, right. Mm-hmm. I was like a big fan of Instagram. Right. Yeah, like I'm like wow, this is great. Like you can make <laughs> one good video, yeah. right? And like Makes thousands sense. of people will come and follow. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, so I think, uh, I think uh, the the great part of Instagram is right. I think that is one platform which you can go viral. That that mm-hmm. algorithm supports you to go viral. Okay. So if you're say like uh, somebody who has the ability to engage people, or in general are like a model and is attractive, mm-hmm. right? 
you are just going to like be able to easily um, sort of i guess maximize your benefits hmm. from that platform okay so i think uh, i joined instagram with around 20 okay so like a really really late adopter mm-hmm. so i'm from the facebook generation right? oh so like, from my you can uh, understand yeah like in my school and college days instagram didn't exist college right. also didn't exist right i was working second third year when instagram came so okay. i never used instagram mm mm-hmm. it's only when i'm like hey let's get content that got instagram okay so yeah i think instagram is an amazing tool but i think the the negative of it is that so many people can post right yeah. everyone's posting a photo or a video or mm-hmm. this or that your competition is so high that you will mm-hmm. now try to constantly uh, try to engage that user faster and faster and faster mm-hmm. and um, as a creator you can't take too many risks Right. right. You can't be like, "Chalo, I'll put one slow two minute, uh, whatever, say ninety yeah. second wala video." It won't work on Instagram. It won't work. Yeah. So that is probably the negative of it. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So, cool. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to understand, like, how do you come up with ideas for your con, like ideas and content for your videos? Like, what's the entire ideation process that you follow? Yeah. Uh, like, first of all, like a lot of watching, <laughs> a lot of watching reels and YouTube videos. Right. Um. In 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 general, I think I operate in a very uh, comedic, entertaining space okay, in my yes. head. Although it doesn't that. show in the video always, okay. <laughs> but yes, I think uh, dramatic, comedic mm-hmm. things are very exciting to me. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess I try to just make mm-hmm. it as dramatic as comedic. One of the two extremes, right? Mm-hmm. Either you laugh or you're like in overwhelmed with intensity of what you're watching. Okay. Okay. So I just try to make it like that. It's because I've seen a lot of movies. My mm-hmm. lot of my inspiration comes from movies. Okay. Movies and music. Right. Uh, so many times, like, hey, can I create, recreate that scene from that movie which came out in 2010? Okay. I feel like good movies don't exist anymore. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> no, they're they're more formulaic. Right. But I think really creative stuff, like purely mm-hmm. creative stuff, where there was it was okay to make a b- movie mm-hmm. which costed quite a bit and it didn't rake in a lot of money. This okay. was very normal till the pre Avengers and pre mm-hmm. Marvel phase. Okay. Uh, so I think you had some gem mm-hmm. of movies if you explore from nineteen ninety five to two thousand twelve fifteen. Right. Yeah. I think this era was mind blowing in terms of movies. Yeah. And it was very normal for people to sit through three hours yes. of just doing one thing, which is yes. watching a movie. Which it doesn't happen as much. Attention spans are like really dropping. Agree. But yeah, I think I take a lot of inspiration from like older movies. Okay. To try to recreate some moments. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. So that you can grab attention instantly. Is yeah, yeah, problem? and and it's like a small homage from mm-hmm. my side to. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, it, it it comes down to finding a moment like that. Hmm. Uh, but I'm still learning. I've probably posted right. like some twenty twenty five reels, but yeah, like still yeah. learning a lot. Yeah, that's my main inspiration. All right. So, like, what are your future plans for trading with Shorya? Like, in the coming years, <laughs> suppose like in two to three years okay. span, okay. what have you planned for trading with Shorya? Right. That that question makes me laugh a little bit because okay. I'm like I don't know where my next one week will go. But anyway. <laughs> let's but, be futuristic. <laughs> let's be optimistic. What's your answer? Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, my goal is to uh, like after being completely free, mm-hmm. post like getting out of a job. I'm mm-hmm. now basically looking at it this way where um, I am trying to basically create a solution. for okay. people right yes and for me that number is 4% right so i am doing a lot of research as we speak mm-hmm. today yeah to crack how can we earn 4% monthly right. okay right uh, at scale right so i want you mm-hmm. right say you are like a young 20 something person in a tech company mm-hmm. i want you to be able to come mm-hmm. and click a button mm-hmm. okay and say i have subscribed to algorithm x of shorya mm-hmm. right And this will now whatever money I put in it, hypothetically say one lakh rupees I put mm-hmm. in it, four thousand rupees per month has mm-hmm. to keep coming. Oh, right, automatically. Okay. okay. Right, mm-hmm. without you putting a single minute of effort. Okay. Into manually trading or investing or whatever. Okay. Right, and that backend solution is what I'll put. So that's okay. the vision that I that's move forward. That's a really big vision. It's a really big vision. It's a very But ambitious. But I think I hope it comes to some day because it sounds really nice. I'm very. Yeah. मतलब it's very nice. Yeah, I know that like a ton of people would want this. Yeah. And a lot of people. Not heard of it though. So it's 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 all very unique to me. Yeah. So yeah. 
this is you know very you know what you this is very very normal in the trading community the trading community oh. may be less than 1% of our okay. country like even smaller bro mm-hmm. right uh, but uh, this is very normal people trying to make 3 4 5 6 7% okay. uh, in a month mm-hmm. right um so just for the record like 6% a month mm-hmm. is doubling your money every year okay like just mm-hmm. if you put that thought into like this i trip on this thought like crazy okay. if you just do that math mm-hmm. that's doubling your money in one year four xing your money in two years okay right okay um 16 xing it in four years okay 16 xing your money in four years that's what that's 6% a month gives you okay right like right. my math right here four goes it correct Yeah. So cool. so this is of course pre tax you will pay tax on this obviously but okay. but just for a moment like if you imagine what i'm saying that's mm-hmm. 16x if you can mm-hmm. achieve 6% per month mm-hmm. for 4 years mm-hmm. like there's going to be way more than what your salary can ever give you. Yes. Right? Indeed, indeed. So that's what i want to enable we mm-hmm. may not achieve 6 i think 6 is very ambitious. Mm-hmm. I think 4 is definitely achievable. Right. Even with 4 it's 16x in 6 years which is still amazing right right so that's what i'm trying to achieve i want to be able to i think it would be a success for me if a college student can come out and say that hey i'm in fourth year i know there's a guy named shorya who has say spread awareness about such a concept mm-hmm. uh, and i need a click of a button or knowledge pool mm-hmm. this which i can provide a workshop or a tool where right. which is which provides either mm-hmm. of these two things but that should be possible i think that's the world i imagine that's okay. the fantasy world that i imagine right Uh, and that's why I call it my second salary, or every month yes, second salary. Yes, it's the annual Instagram bio, right? Yeah, it's yeah. clearly mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, where do you get inspiration from for all of your content? Mm-hmm. What's that source that you drive inspiration from? Again, I think it's it's a lot of watching a lot of reels and uh, okay. just like a lot of mm-hmm. like being like a movie nerd over the years. Okay. So. <laughs> it's just pretty much that mm-hmm. um uh, the goal is to sort of making it to make finance as entertaining and fun as possible i think I one think person it's a very nice combination no finance is to be treated t- to be too serious a thing yeah. i think it's nice yeah. the combination itself sounds interesting and nice yeah, yeah. i think you should have like very funky youthful yeah. um like finance folks out mm-hmm. there who your country can like emulate so mm. I'll just to give you like just to like segue into something that uh, mm-hmm. comes into my mind, right? So when I when I looked at trading in college days, mm-hmm. so this is the pre-trading via internet era. Mm-hmm. So it has just started that hey, you know, you can place an order by clicking a button. Oh. You had to make a call. Yeah. In yeah, say, like Domino's and all. We used to just call and we used to get the order. I remember that. Like, yeah, yes. exactly. There was no online interface. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I was in second year of college, mm-hmm. first year of college, having a tool was not there. Yes. Okay, you had to first of all get some very complex software, mm. which very few people in the world would have yeah. access to. Yeah. And uh, Zerodha, which is mm. a com, you, you would have heard Zerodha. Yeah. So Zerodha yeah. is like came in 2014 or 13, mm. and they changed this game. Yeah. They said click of a button, low cost, everyone can access it. Okay. Right. So uh, I'm saying the world was like so different. Um, mm-hmm. Shit, I'm forgetting what I wanted to say, but. Yeah, but the world was right. so different mm-hmm. right, in terms of what was possible. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I've been seeing things from then, right? When it comes right. to trading, not that I traded like a lot in those days, but yes. that's the image that I had, right, from then. So, I'm saying, from then to now, even what some ten or nine odd years have passed since then, there are very few people who go on YouTube mm-hmm. and make finance entertaining. It's been nine years. Yeah. And in those days, you didn't have access to that YouTube also, so information yes. was also big gap. Yeah. and if you even today look up finance you will find a lot of like people who are very who are typically looking a little older mm-hmm. very serious yeah. very professor like so i have the years that i've spent learning trading has been like feeling like i'm watching a lecture okay i do i want to come out of that now i want to have like a place where you know i can go and be like wow learning finance uh, even if i'm not getting like a one hour lecture mm-hmm. like a 10 5 minute video but damn entertaining I really want that to be there, and okay. some people have done it now, but it's like okay. it's still very few. Anyway, right. So moving <laughs> on to the last question of this segment. Okay. What advice would you give to aspiring traders and content creators looking to build a successful career, like in this field, like both content creation yeah. and trading together, or in the separately too? I think trading first. I mm-hmm. think which is what I know better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. 
ट्रेडिंग आई थिंक आई से दैट लुक इफ यू आर एंटरिंग ट्रेडिंग एंड यू वॉन्ट मेक मोर दैन द म्यूचुअल फंड वैल्यू विच इज वन परसेंट अ मंथ टॉप्स इज वॉट यू वॉन्ट गेट इफ यू वॉन्ट मेक मोर दैन दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एक्सेप्ट दैट यू वॉन्ट लूज अ लिटल बिट इन द बिगनिंग एक्सेप्ट दैट इट्स अ लर्निंग प्रोसेस एंड दैट लर्निंग प्रोसेस इज गोन टू टेक टाइम आई एम स्टिल लर्निंग Hmm. I've been doing this for years, and I'm still learning. And okay. this learning process of depth will keep going on and on and on. Hmm. It's a very long marathon that you're trying to take on. I see a lot of people entering for first year. They lose say ten thousand rupees, hmm. and they totally freak out, yeah. right? And they totally freak out, and they back off in fear, right? So, like you are trying to enter a race car, right? So you have to take a lot of training. Yes, you will still struggle with the race car two years down the line. you mm-hmm. might be slightly better at it right so i'll say that you have to mentally prepare yourself to mm-hmm. take on a very difficult task okay right it's not an easy task mm-hmm. uh, to the trading may be finally very not so challenging but it's the mindset right, right. Uh, so we have to come out of an employee mindset uh, and you have to rather see it as a business right, right. so if, as a business how will you be you'll be like hey i have an initial capital of say 5 lakhs mm-hmm. uh, and uh, i am going to have to Invest this to say get a place, say get employees, say get whatever, okay, whatever resources. This is going to cost me. Right. This will generate some, let's say, value in the future, right? Literally, month one of a business, that five lakhs will not grow to five point five lakhs, mm-hmm. right? Yes. It's going to take one year of say burning, learning, establishing mm-hmm. a ground to get there. So, um, if you are entering with say three lakhs, two lakhs, five lakhs, I think a lot of traders in their mid twenties yes. will put typically. So if you're putting that amount, mm-hmm. except that hey, you know what? Maybe ten percent of it could reduce. Maybe twenty percent okay. of it could reduce. It's very natural for that to happen, right? Uh, that's the cost you pay to learn. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And in your business of trading, which is going to be for fifty years, so if you're twenty-five, you'll do this till seventy-five. Please okay. understand that, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to live till seventy-five for sure. Yes. Right? You're not going to. So, so for fifty years, mm-hmm. if it's your fifty-year-long career, you have to want to take a year or two or three, maybe more, maybe less. Okay. to really master it or to really gain a good hang of it okay. and in that period it may cost you a little bit like any business does right so have to like really accept that and be okay with it and don't freak out if you lose you have to okay. come a little mentally prepared that that's the process yeah agree that was the advice of training right uh, i think on content uh, uh, i don't know if i'm like so good at doing you know, content yeah, i could do you have mass, like good follower good, good, good. Decent, decent. yeah that's pretty good <laughs> Yeah. So, um, I would say that uh, with content, hmm. um, just like I think, if you're getting, if you're trying to analyze a little deeper, like you go one layer more deeper, and say that hey, you know what, that one moment makes me feel great. Yeah. Right. I think this is what I have done in my own little manner, like where it's sometimes. It's a scene change with the beat of a mu- with the beat of a song, or if it's um, you know sometimes uh, uh, a certain statement at a certain with a certain timing, or if it's. Uh, mm. uh, but I think what I'm trying to say is that get deeper into what makes people feel good. Okay. Right. If you see, uh, say, like a model, right, mm. or if you see somebody making money, or if you see see somebody. Just putting a great edit, right? In general, these are natural things as human beings that you're going to start feeling good about, right. right? It's just you're mentally programmed to feel good about these things, right? right? Uh, so I think getting deep into what makes people feel good, feel happy, right, is very important. Okay. I think that answer to that will solve your growth and content creation problem, mm-hmm. right? And uh, Then you just have to find more and more and more ways to make people happy and enjoy okay. those things. Yeah. So so that's, that's a very good piece of advice. Yeah. Thank you for that. Aside, <laughs> sure, by the way. Sure, sure. So now let's move on to more fun and interesting part of the podcast. Right, right. The other what if questions. Sure. Let's begin. Are you ready for it? Okay, I'm not prepared for this. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> this is supposed to be the surprise. Okay, okay. Right. So if you had to switch your careers tomorrow, mm. what job would you pursue and why? Quick, very quick. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I would want to be a video editor. Video editor, great. Okay, so if you could have any skill or talent instantly, mm-hmm. what would it be and why? I would want to be able to face the stage. I would want to be able to, let's say, talk to people okay. in a crowd very, very easily. Okay. 
Okay. I think uh, that, that is that's one of the great. underrated skills. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So if you could live in any time period, would you choose the past or the future? Past. Really? 100% past. That's a very uh, like unique answer. People usually would choose the future, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, the past had some of the best things. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, like, like mm-hmm. if I go to the 80s, for example. Yes. Right, it's... it's like it was peaceful, more very peaceful. peaceful. It was not a race. It was all peaceful. It was and very I, peaceful. Like, uh, the 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 race of life today exists yes. because of massive inflation, massive yes. costs, uh, and and people. I think in the past could just be like, hey, I just want to do a chill job. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. You still make enough money. Your rent yeah. will be very low. Yeah. Uh, and and they were deep artists. I think yes. I love that whole era where musicians, filmmakers, um, different artists, right? So like. I would be like, wow, what a time to live in for the 80s, 90s. I think mm-hmm. that was a great time for uh, artists. Right. And if you're making a project, no, like mm-hmm. there's no pressure that, hey, if you're putting, say, hypothetically 10 lakhs into a project, you don't have to come with a blockbuster revenue out of it. Mm-hmm. People will be like, hey, I'm just making a good piece and it's okay. Yeah, they're satisfied. No FOMO. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now there's no FOMO. Exactly. <laughs> I agree with you with that. on that point. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Okay, okay. next question. If you could only wear one color for the rest of your life, what would it be? I think I know the most generic answer, but it's fine. Let let. No, I I no, I'm not picking black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the generic answer I was thinking of. I'll pick red. Red, yeah, yeah. I like red I like and black. black. That's like a yeah. favorite. <laughs> cool. Okay, would you rather have the power to heal others or the power to read minds? I think heal others. That's more peaceful, peaceful. right? Reading minds, <laughs> too much information. As it is, I live with too much information. And right, that's right. more peaceful. At least yeah, somebody is right. happy around. Yes. Yeah, that, yes. that's nice. Yes. If you had to choose between being able to see into the future or being able to change the past, which one would you choose? Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would want you to see into the future. See into the future? Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. Okay, so with that we come to the end of this fun segment too. So awesome thank, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you Shorya for sharing such great insights with all of us. Yeah. It was great talking to you by the way. You know it already. Yeah. Wishing you all good things and would love to see more of your content. Greater trading, finance and everything. Right? And keep educating us and wishing you good luck for all your future endeavors. Right? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Super fun. Yeah. Welcome. And all of you out there listening to this episode, that's a wrap for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed creating it. If you have any feedback, questions or suggestions for future topics, we would love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out to us on our social media web channels and website. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review to help us reach more listeners. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed and keep exploring the world around you. This is Devi along with Shorya signing off. Thank you for tuning in. See you. Bye.